Let's talk some commies here. The Commanders uh, had a bizarre and very interesting draft, I think. Uh, the first one, Jahan Dotson, who he's just someone who I feel like there, there's there was the widest range of opinions on him out of anyone else in this draft class. He's someone who, you know, my podcast co-host Kyle uh, thinks that this is the round one he should have been going mid first round. This is the correct uh, spot for him. For me, I did not have him as a top 10 wide receiver on this list, so or on my list. So why am I lower on him than others? And again, a lot of people have felt that way. There's a lot of different varying opinions about him. From what I saw about him as a player is he felt like a very much a ma- jack-of-all-trades master of none to me. He can certainly do a lot of different things, and I, I have very little doubt that he'll come in and be a good player. Uh, I've heard, you know, he... he I've heard a lot of people rave about his high football IQ, which that's cool. Okay, definitely like that. That's that's valuable and could help out a Carson Wentz. Uh, and again, there were a decent amount of wide receivers already off the board. So I don't hate this pick necessarily, but it did feel like a bit of a reach for me. It, it did. That being said, wide receiver, notoriously the most difficult position to evaluate. All the time, there's wide receivers that people like that fall, and there's wide receivers that people don't like that do end up being great pros. So who knows of this stuff? It very much is a, you know, put a ball under three cups and try to guess the right cup kind of thing with wide receivers. So, uh, you know, we'll see if I guess the wrong cup and he's actually pretty good, uh, which is very possible. Also, uh, Fitterin Mathis, another guy like Dotson, and in fact, I think all of these three guys, I feel the same about them, where I like them all, they just felt like a bit early to me. So Mathis is someone who I did like. I think that there's some interesting value with him. He's a big defensive tackle. He'll be an interior defensive lineman guy who can, uh, you know, he can rush the passer as well. So he's not just a pure run stuffer. And for the interior defensive line, it's very important, but doesn't get a lot of uh, attention. So people don't pay much attention to those guys, but it matters for sure. And having several guys who can do that matters. So if you're trying to help out your edge rushers, especially putting Mathis next to a Chase Young or Montez Sweat, yeah, that's going to help. So like to pick, again, is it a bit early? Probably. You look at the consensus big board, 75th, they're getting him at 47. Was there no one higher on your board? But again, at the same time, if you're getting good players, that is the goal. So uh felt a bit early. And same thing with Brian Robinson at 98. I like Brian Robinson. I had him as, I believe, my halfback four in this draft class, which is higher than a lot of people had him. I think he's very good. He's a physical guy who I think adds, brings something new to the table for this Washington football team who feels like I didn't even mean to do that. This Washington football team. Yeah, the Washington football team. Uh, that's funny. I didn't even mean to do that. Um, anyways, with Brian Robinson, uh, he does bring something new to the the commies here because he is someone who, uh, you know, is physical. And I think that the way I always feel about running backs is if you're going to take someone in the top 100 picks, if, if they're a running back, what you have to do is you have to be ready to be competitive now. Otherwise, it's a bad pick. The commanders are ready to be competitive now. Now, maybe they won't be competitive, but they're ready to be competitive. That's what they're attempting to do. I think they feel solid about Carson Wentz, which Wentz isn't horrible. Like He's overpaid, but he's not a trash quarterback. Uh, I don't think that this is a, a horrendous pick if the goal is to make the playoffs necessarily. So that's how I feel about Robinson. Next up, they had Percy Butler, uh, a safety who I'm actually pretty interested in. So one thing, 113. So, you know, we are starting to get down a little bit lower on this list. Uh, you know, who's 209 on the consensus big board ranking. And yeah, that's what you see on the screen, by the way, uh, is, you know, column on the left. That's when they got drafted. Column next to their name, where they were on the consensus big board. Uh, and, you know, so again, a bit of a reach, but he's an interesting player. He's kind of this explosive safety who did play pretty well uh, at Louisiana. So it, again, is it a reach? Maybe, but at the same time, there is reason to be interested in him. And I have no real issue reaching on guys once you get past the B100 pick, if you like them. Before that, I think that you should, you know, uh, again, take the player you think is best. Don't take someone that you don't think is as good just because they're higher on the consensus big board, of course. But it's more so, why were you so much higher on this guy than other people were, is always the question. Um, number 144, this is probably the most interesting draft pick that they had Sam Howell who was 52nd on their big on the consensus big board so according to the consensus big board he's actually number uh you know the second best prospect that they got 
in this draft class, but they got him with the 144th overall pick. And listen, this is a good selection, I think. A, it's a fifth round pick. What's the worst that can happen? Teams spend fifth round, teams spend fourth round picks on punters and kickers. So going after a quarterback in round five that has potential and there were some rumblings the year before of him being like uh, the first overall pick. So getting him uh, at pick five, yeah, that's a good selection just on its face value. If this is a team that had no quarterback issues, if the Chiefs did this, it's a good selection just because of the value. However, this is the commanders who, listen, I don't think that this means they're moving off of Carson Wentz. I really don't. I think this means that they understand who Carson Wentz is. He's someone who has been injury prone over the course of his career. So there is a good chance Howell will come in and play. Wentz is also someone who has seen his career fall off a cliff. You know, his last year in Philadelphia, he, he, it was just a complete mess. He wasn't a complete mess in Indianapolis. Wentz is not trash. This does not mean they're going to move off of him because if they were ready to move off of him, they would have drafted a quarterback earlier. Like this to me means that they understand that Wentz is not a can't miss situation. And plus you do need good backup halfbacks or excuse me, backup quarterbacks. So getting Sam Howell who plays like a halfback at times, uh, very much a, devel a developmental guy in Howell, but hey, there's reason to like him. At 149, they first go with Cole Turner. So he was the their other fifth round pick who's, again, interesting, kind of more of a contested catch guy is what it seems. So, uh, you know, getting a, a tight end here in the fifth round, that's solid value. Again, I like getting tight ends sort of round four or five. Those guys will still, you know, come in and help out your team in some ways. So, do like that pick. And then at 230, they got guard Chris Paul. No, not that guard Chris Paul. The other guard Chris Paul. Uh, the football one, not the basketball one. Uh, he's an interesting guy as well. So he's someone who last year, specifically in pass blocking sets, was not very good. His numbers were bad in like true pass blocking sets, especially. He was really bad. But two things to note. He played tackle where now he's going to play guard. So you're putting him in a different situation where he can succeed. And the other thing, he was actually good two years ago. So this is similar to the Sam Howell pick. You're banking on last year being a fluke, and maybe you can you know, find the best out of someone and get the best year out of a Chris Paul for a seventh round pick for pick 230. I like that as a move. So seems like Washington views that way about some of these guys, you know, going with uh, obviously Carson Wentz, who's the definition of that guy. And then Sam Howell, now Chris Paul. So be interested to see if that works out. He's someone who actually for a seventh round pick could end up being like a good player. If it all works out, there is some upside potential with the guard from Tulsa. Um, Christian Holmes here at pick 240 cornerback, who I'm assuming is just going to be a special teams guy. Again, uh, every time I see a corner at 240, I'm like, you probably play special teams, right? I'm sure that that's at least going to be a part of it, especially when he was the 565th rated prospect on the consensus big board. Let's see if he can show the consensus big board or prove the consensus big board wrong. So interesting stuff. Uh, as a whole, I, I would say an okay draft with the commanders. They got some interesting players. I feel like they could have maximized this a little bit more potentially. Uh, you know, for me personally, I would have rather... Honestly, I would rather they stayed at 11 and picked the receiver than trading back. Uh, I don't really know what that gained for them necessarily. They must have just really liked Dotson is what happened. They must have just been a big Dotson fan. I would have rather just taken Jamison Williams, but that's because I really like Jamison Williams and am not as high on Dotson. So well, it'll be interesting to see. There is a scenario where they don't end up with a star player out of any of these picks, but there's a scenario where they end up with a few star players with these picks. So that's kind of why they're an interesting draft. So uh, that's what I think about all this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What were your th thoughts on Washington's draft? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.